All your channels are eventually routed through the master channel. And if you look at this in the mixer, you can see it has various different sections. If we spin down to the bottom, here's the master fader that controls the whole output of the track. It also has an EQ window, you can apply EQ across the whole master output. You've got effects, returns and sends. And also, crucially, master inserts. Master inserts are plug-in chains for processing the entire sound. So, for example, if I wanted to load one, I might want to put, for example, a dance preset across my master channel. If I do that, you can see some quick controls load up here. If I wanted to edit those inserts, I could click on that button to be jumped to the rack. And here are my master processors. I'm able to drop any other modules I want into here. I could get rid of the stereo imager, for instance, by pressing delete. And I might decide that I wanted a reverb unit as a master processor. I could just drop that in there. If I spin the rack round, all that complex wiring has already been taken care of. Returning to the main mixer, up at the top here is a master bus compressor. And what that does is it enables you to apply compression across the entire track. Using a bit of gentle master bus compression is a great way to kind of give a track an audio glue to pull all the aspects of it together. After the tracks have come here from the mixer, they can get fired through the master bus compressor. You don't have to use it, but what you might find is it's actually a really nice way of just applying a kind of nice audio sheen to your track. If you look at the rack, go up to the top and spin it round. You'll see that the master section feeds directly to the audio output. And these audio outputs here are the ones that feed to your audio hardware.